Welcome back to the Techmoto channel and the electronics playlist. Today we're going to be looking at logic and I'm hoping that you've watched the video on binary so that you understand the use of zeros and ones to represent on and off. Now some people think that this subject is quite complex um, but it is in fact really very simple and we're going to make this video as straightforward as we possibly can so that everybody can get it straight away. Logic in electronics is all about making decisions and so you might use it in a circuit on um, an aeroplane where you want to make sure that all your doors are closed before you can take off or you might want to use it as a security device on your house to make sure that all your doors are left closed and if one of them is opened an alarm goes off. And so today we're going to talk about logic gates and we're going to talk about logic gates that are called an AND gate, an OR gate, a NOR gate a NAND gate and a NOT gate. We'll cover what they look like, how they're represented in a circuit symbol form, we'll do a representation of them in sort of basic components and we'll show you how to use them actually in a circuit. So let's go through them one by one and we'll start off with the AND gate. Now we're going to show a representation of an AND gate just in normal components. So we'll take a 9 volt battery we'll take two switches and we'll take a motor and what we're going to do is we're going to wire these up in series so it comes from the battery through your first switch through your second switch and then through your motor before returning to the battery now in this situation to make the motor work you would have to press both switches and the easiest way to think about this is to make the motor work you would have to press this switch and you would have to press this switch and it's the and that makes the big difference here you have to press that one and that one and so this is a representation of an and gate so this is the circuit symbol representation of an and gate and you'll notice that there are two inputs on the left hand side and an output on the right hand side so to get an output of one coming out of the logic gate a one representing on you have to turn on both of the inputs. So for an AND gate to get a 1 coming out of the output you need a 1 and a 1 on the input pins. If either of the pins are 0 there is no output coming out of the AND gate. So now let's look at the OR gate and again we'll do the same thing as we did with the AND gate we'll just make it up in simple switches. Now you'll notice that in this scenario what we've done is we put the switches in parallel so we've still got a battery, we've still got two switches and we've still got a motor but by wiring it slightly differently we get a different outcome. In this scenario if we press this switch or we press this switch the motor will spin and what's important here is you can press either or of those switches to make the motor spin. So if the first switch here is on the motor will spin and if the second switch is on the motor will spin but if one of the switches, doesn't matter which one, is off as long as the other one is on it will continue to power the motor. Interestingly if both the switches are on the motor also spins. So you need a 1 and a 0 or a 0 and a 1 or a 1 and a 1 to get an output from this circuit. So let's move over to the uh, circuit schematic symbol for an OR gate which looks like this. You'll notice it looks very similar to the AND gate. It has two pins on the left hand side and one pin on the right hand side. The two pins on the left hand side are your inputs and the pin on the right hand side is your output. So in this scenario to get a 1 coming out of the OR gate you need a 1 on either of the pins going in. So this pin or this pin. The next gate we're going to look at is the NOT gate and it's not so easy to make up a NOT gate in switches um, but luckily the NOT gate is really easy to understand because the NOT gate only has one pin on the left hand side which is your input and one pin on the right hand side which is your output. Now this one's really simple because all it does is it inverts your signal and what I mean by that is if you put a zero on the left hand side what comes out of the output is a one. It just gives you the opposite. And similarly if you put a 1 as the input you get a 0 as the output. Now pay close attention to the little circle on the tip of the NOT gate because this is really useful when we're talking about our next two gates. Now if we take an AND gate and we put that in series with a NOT gate 
what you end up with is a scenario where if you have two ones going into your AND gate, you get a one coming out of the other side. And then it goes through the NOT gate, which inverts it, which means you end up with your final output being a zero. Now, this is what's called a NAND gate. So we've got an AND gate and then a NOT gate. So whatever's coming out of the AND gate is immediately inverted. Now we can draw it like this, and that's perfectly fine and perfectly acceptable. But do you remember I spoke about the little circle on the end of the NOT gate? Well, we can write in shorthand with logic, so we can actually get rid of that NOT gate off the end, but keep the little circle. So by putting a little circle on the end of an AND gate like this, it represents what we call a NAND gate. And the NAND gate is an AND gate and a NOT gate, so you end up with NOT AND. NAND. In a similar way, we can take our OR gate and we can add that in series with a NOT gate and you get the same scenario. So you get two inputs to an output on the other side of the OR gate. So if you have a 1 and a 0 on one side of the OR gate, you get a 1 on the output side of the OR gate. And then that goes through the NOT gate and that inverts it to a 0. We can shorthand that again by getting rid of that NOT gate, taking the little circle and sticking it on the end of our OR gate, and we end up with a NOR gate. Now we can make this slightly easier to understand by putting together what's called a truth table. And a truth table is just a table of results based on what your inputs are. Now the truth table at the top has A and B, which is your inputs. So on your AND gate, you would have your two switches effectively. Um, and the Q is your output. And we can list in this table all of the possible eventualities for an AND gate. So if we just go through these, an AND gate needs both switches to be pressed to get a positive output or a 1. And so let's go through them. We have 0, 0, we have 1, 1, we have 1, 0, and we have 0, 1. And then we can add in the outputs that you would get in each one of those scenarios. If we wipe the slate and we do a truth table for an OR gate, the inputs are going to be exactly the same. You have a 0, 0, you have a 1, 1, you have a 1, 0, and you have a 0, 1. And then you can put the outputs in, which of course will be different to the AND gate, um, but work in exactly the same way. OK, let's move it forwards and we can do one for a NAND gate. So we have our 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 and the outputs are going to be the direct opposite of the AND gate. We can do the same thing for a NOR gate, same inputs, and slightly different outputs. But this is how we use truth tables to understand what the inputs and outputs we're going to get from our logic system are. And so that's it. A very brief introduction to logic uh, when using electronic circuits. Now later on in this series I'm going to show you how to actually use the logic gates um, in ICs so you can actually program more complex circuits um, than just by using switches. Um, but that's a longer video to be done um, and we will cover it at a future date. Uh, if you've liked this video please do uh, throw me a thumbs up, please do subscribe, uh, hit that bell icon if you want to see future videos and I'll see you in the next one.